My name is Android. Today we are going to be going over some new papers that I created specifically for Corel Painter 2020. The first paper we're going to be looking at is called Binary. Uh, it's a really simple, just a black and white repeating pattern. All the papers in this library, um, they are tileable, which means you can scale them and that, from their smallest size to larger size, and the pattern will repeat on itself and so you don't run into any seams, so they can be used for a wide variety of different different shapes. What you see me doing here is I'm altering the size of the paper on the fly and there's a little icon you'll notice right next to the right of the, the preview that allows you to invert the texture you're seeing. So I kind of moved from this first binary paper and now I'm using the paper next to it. Um, so it's called Oregon. I call it, call it Zavi. And um, these are two pretty fun papers because they were both made from the same um, source image and so they actually uh, they play together very well if you keep their size consistent or or inconsistent for that matter so you see here i'm just kind of going back and forth alternating between warm and cool colors to get new shapes up next here i call this one metal it's just a really simple two-dimensional brick pattern i think the one does a pretty good job of just showing how you can nest and kind of create almost um, like recursive complexity with just using one paper. And so what's great about these papers is you can also change the angle. So here I've changed the paper to a uh, 45 degree angle and I'm alternating the size of the paper and inverting it and going kind of back and forth with some cool colors and some warmer colors to just get a, just a, a layered complexity of patterns and shapes happening. Now I've um, inverted the angle of the paper to 135 degrees, so it's perpendicular to that 45 degree angle we had. Now I'm adding some warm tones and again, just kind of working back and forth um, inverting the paper, then inverting again, changing the size, inverting it, kind of rinsing and repeating. And um, you can see how this, these layers, and still I'm just working on, on one layer here, all these layers in these colors start to create a image that's greater than some of their parts. This next paper is, is called this one chess another very simple repeating geometric pattern. Something else I really like about painters, these papers, they, they act almost as if kind of an, an interactive alpha channel without the, the complexity or the weight of having to create a separate layer for your alpha channel. Um, often I can, when I've found a, a size and a contrast level you like, as long as you keep the settings where they were, you can go back and kind of work on the same paper layer, um, adding different tones. Uh, this brush that I have, this, this is a, it's a great brush. It's in your, you can find this in your, the chalk and pastel category. This is, it's just the, uh, the, the real fat chalk. And um, it does a good job of, giving a lot of contrast to the paper texture. And um, it's got kind of a, it's got a nice opacity that allows you to, with your Wacom pen sensitivity, add varying levels of pressure to affect the degree of translucency or opacity of each stroke. Up next, this is a fun one. Um, I call this one Fractal Flow. I developed this using the Mandelbrot software. So this is a particular fractal parameter that I rendered out. Um, I rendered it out into an equirectangular image and then um, used some 
used Photoshop and some offsetting to make it a tileable image. But this is a this is a great example of how a paper can actually like assist you with your creative idea development. Um, what's nice about these shapes is there's just lots of kind of undulating, organic, twisty, kind of curvy inward shapes. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the paper and I'm changing up the angle. Um, I'm inverting the contrast. In some situations, if I want, if I want to add more shadows and some more, more darker tones, I might even bring the brightness down a bit. And uh, I'm just kind of um, oscillating between the highlights and the shadow tones on this paper to kind of create more and more complexity. And you know, as I do this, as each of these shapes start to present themselves, um, you know, it's almost kind of your creatively, you're kind of uncovering a kind of a new mysterious sort of composition. And um, you know, this is a, a technique that I've used for many years is sort of taking advantage of the 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 inert meaning making machine of our consciousness um to, it's a phenomenon called pareidolia which is kind of making meaning out of chaos and shapes and so you'll find when you use these sort of papers or other papers like this you know it's not too long before laying down a certain amount of random or chaotic shapes that the that the mechanisms of your own imagination start finding stories and meaning and you can uh, just the objectiveness of chaos um, just starts becoming irresistible and um, yeah you can see this could I could turn this into an environment it could be a component of a character but Lots of possibilities with that one. Moving right along this next paper, um, if I call this one Dodeca Chaos, um, sort of made this in ZBrush, uh, just made some insert multi brushes with a lot of different dodecahedron and insert meshes together and then rendered a large field of that and then started to kind of tile and tessellate it out and what i like about this particular paper texture is that there's a lot of there's a lot of hard edges and kind of shapes and forms but there isn't really a a direct center of the composition and so it's it's random enough that it's hard for the mind to find a, a particular tileable pattern but it's just a great it's great for creating um you have it for like technical noise i guess um is kind of where i was going with this one and you can see this is all just using one just that that, that one paper and again this alternating between the invert contrast and uh, slightly changing the angle, moving the size of the the paper um, larger and smaller, and you know, trying to keep a pretty simple, kind of lower saturated palette of of tones and warms and cools. And what I'm kind of going for here is just seeing how I can use this one texture to push a feeling of sort of space and kind of dimensionality within this uh this one flat layer moving right along this next one is just call this one hard chaos um similar geometry to the last one but there's a bit more organic forms um nested within this one um it's really great for creating a uh, kind of like a smooth abstract kind of like Sydney tech going on here 
Um, again, this is, uh, I think what's one thing that I think makes that has attracted me to working with papers, um, specifically in terms of using them as you know, not just a, uh, a detail resource, but as a creative sort of uh, diving board for the inspiration is, as you can see, how, how quickly you can go from kind of zero to 60 within your composition or your idea development. And, um, you know, obviously for each one of these shapes that I kind of lay down, I could create an, an additional layer for that that I could use as an alpha channel kind of moving forward. Um, but the, the, one of the reasons that I don't, and one of the things I've, I've learned over the many years of, of working with Corel Painter, you know, out of all the digital software that I do use, whether that's, and I use a lot, um, whether that's Photoshop or ZBrush or Cinema or Unreal Engine, you know, kind of take your pick. Um, you know, Corel is my favorite program to actually develop ideas and concepts in because I find that it just presents the, the least amount of technical friction towards my idea development. And kind of what I mean by that is that I'm able to, things happen fast in this software um, um, and I can develop an idea and see it through with a reasonable amount of technical accuracy while still remaining in a just a, kind of an open and expansive uh, flow state of mind and because these paper pattern resources um, you're able to make so many changes from size to angle to contrast um, all staying within one layer moving back for color and tones um, and you know, that's where I find some of the best ideas happen when I don't really have an idea of where I'm, where my destination is, but each step is informed by the last. Now, here we have uh, brought up a new paper. This one is, uh, I developed this one, took some photos of some melting snow um, outside on my property, and then use some, some offsetting and uh, a little bit of some, uh, some AI content aware to kind of fill in the missing gaps to what I was going for was kind of a terrain, kind of a organic texture. You could use this one for, um, obviously if you're working in some kind of a natural environment, uh, this kind of texture, the organicness of it could lend itself towards like a, maybe a rust or a, a decay but it just had that sort of that that natural chaos that um, you know only only the artist of nature is really able to capture so well and um, here I'm kind of working trying to find a good balance and rhythm between like the warms and the cools of the highlights and um, taking advantage of these really organic silhouettes and shapes that this uh, kind of melted snow texture has kind of made possible. Uh, going back in, having some darker, cooler hits of contrast and then I'm going to come back up with some more high saturated colors and just see how far I can push this palette till uh, to its 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 reasonable breaking point and I think that is a about about it Uh, next up, this is just your pretty standard uh, Voronoi pattern. I think this is called Voronoi's. Um, this would be great if you're creating some type of a uh, 
psychedelic panther pattern, which I think I'm kind of going for here. Um, what's a nice aspect of this and several of the, the papers that I've created in this, um, this particular pack is, you know, there's even, even with either, you know, the positive or negative of the, of the inverted shape you've got here, depending on your pressure sensitivity and how, my, how, how hard you bear down on your Wacom, um, you can get, there's almost, there's, there's like kind of like a primary and a second, secondary level of tone that you can tap into, which is, uh, you can kind of see how that could be something you'd want to take advantage of. Moving right along, um, another kind of a uh, random fractal pattern. This one I called Hesher. Um, You could uh, use this one if you're kind of, and I, and I really started playing with the full texture. It, it kind of, I don't know, it looked like something you could use to kind of illustrate the, the background liner notes of like a Slayer or like a Megadeth album. Um, your mileage will vary, of course. And uh, again, largely just changing up the scale and the size and pushing a palette of sort of warms and cools. Um, you know, really not thinking of any, any particular like look or feel that I'm, I'm trying to go for, but just really trying to push the, the kind of the, the limits and extents of how, how much variation I can get by just adjusting and just working with one individual paper at a time. This next one, I call this one uh, acidification. It, um, you know, it's a nice kind of organic sort of like coral reef look to it. Um, you know, I think in painting this lots of areas where times where I've wanted a texture where I can kind of make a material look porous. Like if you were doing like a, a bone or a spider web, or I don't know, you know, really a lot of these textures, I, you know, as keeping in mind the utilitarian aspect of why you would want to add this to your library. You know, I think, when I look for what I look for in a paper texture and what I look to when I'm creating them, um, you know, the number one goal is something that I think will be enjoyable and fun to work with and explore. Um, that is, that's, that's usually my primary objective um, when it comes to working with different types of tools or adding to a, like a, a sandbox and a collections of tools and resources. Um, you know, if, if nothing else out of this paper pack, if you don't end up creating your, your next masterpiece, um, I would, I would consider a mission accomplished if it just gave you just more reason to spend time learning and uh, discovering the, the intricacies of this software and what I found, I've been using, I've been using, I did the math for I've actually been using Corel Painter for over 24 years. So I started it before quarantine, obviously, um, and it over the, the decades. Uh, the, I think what's, one of the most important aspect of my, my, my process and my digital evolution, what's kind of kept me at the Wacom pen for um, all these years is discovering and developing and nurturing a, a process and a, and developmental techniques that uh, are, are number one, give me a sense of um, like an immediate gratification 
um, something that I enjoy. Um, I think I find that it's really that joy that that leads to um, progress and new breakthroughs. This next one here, um, or that last one, I think I called it a tick nest. For those of you that are keeping score, and this one's called uh, Morgellons fibers. Google it. Um, this is uh, I think I got this off of a uh, photo of some micro photography, and uh, this would be really great for if you wanted to create some sort of hits of sort of organic fur or fauna or some kind of natural natural feeling. Um, it, uh, it tiles rather nicely and um, you can see here just from scaling and changing the, uh, this, the, the dimension of this texture and working back and forth, it starts to create um, kind of new organic tiles uh, recursively, which is pretty fun. Next up, we called this one mitosis. Um, I actually made this in in ZBrush um, on a way of kind of creating a uh, an interactive tileable texture and um, using some different kind of inflate and push pull tools to create a, a very sort of like a bulbous kind of organic forms coming out and um this is what i kind of like about this one and for those of you that are inspired to to make your own patterns which is great something i highly encourage what i did here is actually instead of rendering a kind of like a lit render of the object i created in zbrush this particular paper is actually made from a uh a, a, like a depth mask which is uh, a death mask is it's really like it's a it's a it's a way of rendering a three-dimensional geometry where um, any object that is closer to the camera is indicated in a lighter white tone and everything farther away is is black and dark and so you get this this gradation of tone and i find that um yeah for those of you that, that have some 3d background or experience there you know try Try just kind of opening and importing some of your depth map textures and using those as, as papers. Um, you get some pretty cool results. This is a, another one that was kind of developed with some depth, some kind of layering, some different depth masks together. I, think I called this Andromeda. Yeah, because it was, uh, it's, it's largely mostly a, a darker toned image. A lot of the others I tried to kind of balance the the highlights midtones and darker tones but this one is i wanted to find something that i could that would allow me to get some some kind of natural and organic kind of spackling of of different sort of dots and shapes together and um yeah i kind of think what i'm trying to do here i was based off the the experience and nature of this texture i wanted to see how effective it could be in creating kind of a uh, know, kind of a psychedelic abstract kind of star field and i think that was my that was my main agenda with this one but you can see here there's also a lot of really pushing this paper to its um its extreme um seeing how many different combinations of, of shapes that I could kind of weave seamlessly together um, using a lot of warm and cools and kind of lower saturated colors as the uh, transitional elements in between. And this last paper, I called this one um, Cymatic. Kind of reminded me of the uh, kind of like a it's like those visualizations of 
sound waves that you see um, kind of when you pour like sand on top of a subwoofer. And uh, yeah, this one just kept it really simple, just working back and forth from warms to cools. And I'm just slowly decreasing the size of this paper pattern as I go, just layering more warms and cools, kind of back and forth, so on and so forth. Just building up the, uh, the like the texture and the form, and um, you know, really just seeing how deep I can go into this warm, cool rainbow pattern before getting nauseous. And um, yeah, yeah. So this is the last paper. Again, you can. Should be able to find all of these um, on the Corel website. Um, and it's my sincere hope that some of these patterns can bring an enhanced level of joy to your Corel painter experience and hopefully inspire some of you guys to make some new papers of your own. So thank you guys very much for your time. I'll see you next time.